And we're back. Here we are. Results for round two in Murder Insanity 2020. Um, we had eight battles that had happened between the Invertebrates of the Land and Invertebrates of the Sea. And now you guys are going to get the results for all of those eight battles. Um, we have students producing all of these videos, yet again, for the recaps. And you can also look on our website, or just Google Mr. Stark, and you will see the brackets there with all the information necessary for who has won. I'm excited to who's going to round three. And, uh, well, hang on tightly because those battles are coming very soon. All right, here we go. On to the show and enjoy. Folks, there was a battle going on between the giant squid and the marble cone snail. Now, the giant squid coming into round two had negative two points. And marble cone snail coming into round two had plus three. So, in the first card, there was only one card drawn though, which is kind of funny. So, what happened was neither of them. Neither had information on the nocturnal versus diurnal. So they both lose a point, which means that the giant squid is at minus three and the marble cone snail is at plus two, which means that the marble cone snail is the winner. Expect to see the marble cone snail and the fried egg jellyfish Battle in round three. This is round two of Invertebrate Insanity. It is against the line main jellyfish and the fried egg jellyfish. The time of day is daylight, and the location is the Sprague Zone. Both invertebrates are coming into this round with minus one point. The first card that was flipped was the recycler card, minus one po point to both invertebrates. The second card that was flipped was card eight, and they both stayed the same. The third and final card that was flipped was the mutualistic symbiotic relationship card, and the lion mane jellyfish did not have a symbiotic relationship. The fried jellyfish moves on with minus one point. This is round two of Invertebrate Insanity of the Sea. We have the Red King Crab and the Ghost Crab going against each other. The first card pick was card number one, which is Nocturnal versus Diurnal. The Red King Crab loses a point because there's no information on the profile card, but the Ghost Crab gains a point because it's Nocturnal. The second card pick was card number 48, which is Geographic Range. The Red King Crab gains a point because of the smaller range, and the Ghost Crab loses a point because of its larger range. The third card pick was card number eight, which is random occurrence. The red king crab and the ghost crab both gain a point because there is no number of legs that was listed. The fourth card pick was card number 18, which is can you change colors. The red king crab and the ghost crab both lose a point because they cannot change color. The final score was the ghost crab dead with negative three points and the red king crab wins with zero points, so it moves on to round three. Hey there everybody, I'm here to do one recap video for this round and this recap video is going to be between the yellow line arrow crab starting off with negative one point and the peacock mantis shrimp starting off with plus two points. We're in the sunlight zone in the open ocean during the day. All right, so the first card slipped and sadly neither of them had information about their exoskeleton. They're both crustaceans, so they both have a pretty rugged exoskeleton but sadly, without the information, they both lose a point. This is devastating for the yellow line arrow crab, bringing it to negative two. One point away for doom. The second card is flipped, and neither of them can handle a change in salinity of the ocean, while the waters are slowly, slowly uh, moving into the oceans even more. Uh, global climate change, all that fun stuff. Um, we have another negative one point, and it's negative three now for the yellow line arrow crab. It is gone. The peacock mantis shrimp also loses a point and they are at zero.
the Peacock Mantis trip is going to round number three with zero points. Welcome to round two of the Inverter and Sandy competition. I'm your host, Cam Morris, and today's matchup is between the TD Fly, who finished the first round with zero points, and the White Line Sphinx Moth, who finished the first round with negative one points. Both Inverters put up a good fight in the first round, so this battle should be exciting. The first card is pulled, and the TT Fly's ability to store food or blood in its abdomen helps it gain a point. Meanwhile, the White Line Sphinx Moth's inability to do so takes point away. In the end, it is TT Fly with one point, and Sphinx Moth with negative two. The second card is pulled, and that does it. The TT Fly's carnivorism, for feeds primarily on blood, helps it to live another day, while the Sphinx Moth, being a herbivore, cannot survive. TG5 moves on to the third round. We'll face off against the Barn Yard Beetle or the Miami Tiger Beetle. See you next time. Thanks for watching. This is a round two battle between the Bombardier Beetle and the Miami Tiger Beetle. It takes place in the frozen tundra during the day. The Miami Tiger Beetle starts the round ahead with plus two points and a winter hat. And the Bombardier Beetle starts with negative two points. The first and only card drawn is card number 43, the poisonous card. The Miami Tiger Beetle is not poisonous and even though the Bombardier Beetle can release a hot chemical bomb, it, uh, it also is not poisonous. Both beetles lose a point and the win goes to the Miami Tiger Beetle. Stay tuned to find out which creature battles in round three. In the second round of Invertebrate Insanity, the Hobo Spider battles the Death Stalker Scorpion. The first card flipped is the Fighting card. Since the Death Stalker Scorpion won't fight back as much as the Hobo Spider, the Hobo Spider gets the The second card flipped was Nocturnal vs. Diurnal. Since both animals like to be in the dark, they both lose a The third card flipped is the Human Benefit card. Since Hobo Spiders aren't known to be beneficial to humans and Death Stalker Scorpions have been known to help humans, then they get the point. The fourth card pulled was the hunting card. Since hobo spiders don't go out and hunt while dust stalker scorpions do, they get the point. Since the hobo spider lives in human areas, they would die so they lose a point, while the dust stalker scorpion gains no points. The sixth card pulled was the eating mate card. Since the dust stalker scorpion will eat its mate and the hobo spider won't, the dust stalker scorpion wins a point. The seventh card pulled was the larger smaller card. Since the dust stalker scorpion is larger, it loses a point. The eighth card pulled was the exoskeleton card. Since neither creature had an exoskeleton, they both lose points. The ninth card pulled was the color card. Since neither creature can change color, they both lose points. The final card is the hail card. Since neither creature has an exoskeleton, they both lose points due to the hail. The death soccer scorpion wins the battle. I expect to see them in round three. For round two of Invertebrate Insanity, we have the Peacock Jumping Spider and the Chilean Rose-Haired Tarantula going against each other. The first card that was picked was card number 40, which is where are you standing on the energy pyramid? The Peacock Jumping Spider gains a point because it's lower on the energy pyramid, but the Chilean Rose-Haired Spider loses a point because it's higher in the energy pyramid. The second card that was picked is card number 25, which is number of offspring. The peacock jumping spider gains a point because it only has 6 eggs, but the Chilean rose also gains a point because it has 50 to 200 eggs. The third card that was picked is card number 44, which is geographic range. The peacock jumping spider loses a point because it's smaller in geographic range, but the Chilean rose-haired tarantula gains a point because it's greater in geographic range. The fourth card that was picked is card number 17, which is sexual reproduction versus asexual reproduction. The peacock jumping spider and the Chilean rose-haired tarantula both lose a point because neither reproduces asexually. Card number 5 is 8L, which is tornado. The peacock jumping spider and the Chilean rose-haired tarantula both get zero points because neither need rotten wood to survive. The sixth card that was picked was card number 2, which is venom versus no venom. Both invertebrates are venomous, so they each gain a point. The seventh card that was picked was card number 34, which is Dinner Partners. The Peacock Jumping Spider 
doesn't gain any points because it doesn't eat its meat. But the Chilean tarantula eats its meat, so it gains a point. The eighth card that was picked was card number 46, which is random occurrences. Neither can handle severe temperature changes, so they both lose a point. The ninth card that was picked was card number 11, which is hiding versus attacking. The jumping spider avoids predators by jumping away, so it loses a point. But the Chilean rose spider confronts its predators, so it gains a point. The tenth card that was picked was card number 2L, which is fire. Neither has wings, so they both lose a point. The final score was the peacock jumping spider dead with negative three points and the Chilean rose hair tarantula with plus three points. So we'll move on to round three.